I've never been too big of a fan of the here's what's in my gear bag videos and articles. They just always seem like they were a little too much show and not enough tell. That's awesome you have all this stuff, but why? Like, why did you decide to put all this stuff in your camera bag? And a lot of people have been asking my thoughts on this. I've always avoided doing something like this, but I do have my first COVID era international photo assignment coming up next week to Peru to photograph a nonprofit working in drowning prevention and water safety in coastal Peru. So I wanted to take this opportunity as I start to pack to kind of take you through my thought process for why I am carrying the gear that I am carrying and not just saying, here's what I'm carrying. So getting into carrying the gear. I always carry two bags uh, with photography gear. The first is my main backpack. And this is the Shimoda Action X30 for mirrorless camera systems. All of my camera uh, gear goes in this bag. It's what I use to and from the airport. It fits in the overhead travel bins. Uh, and if I'm out on a longer trip while I'm in country or traveling around in country, uh, then I'll have everything in here in this bag. And then the other bag is a Think Tank retrospective canvas shoulder bag. This is the retrospective five. I have a few different sizes. I don't know what size I'm gonna bring yet, but the thing I love about this bag and, and this bag too, is that they don't scream camera gear. They're very inconspicuous bags that look like they could be just, you know, your everyday backpack or shoulder bag to the untrained eye, uh, which is why I chose these. And they're both very rugged, very practical, uh, and I get a lot of use out of them. So uh, all my camera gear, when I travel in this bag, uh, this is my uh, carry-on item, and this is my personal item. I will usually have one of my three cameras in here, along with a uh, change of underwear and a toothbrush and some deodorant if I have any kind of travel delays, um, and that's always in here with me. And then I'll readjust things when I get in country. Uh, but let's get into the actual gear itself now. Many of you know that I am invested in the Fujifilm camera system. They make great travel cameras. They're small and portable. Uh, I can pre-process my images with their image styling options. If I get my white balance correct and my exposure correct, then there's really not a whole lot left to do for post-processing. And if you wanna learn about that methodology, I have it all laid out in a course that you can check out in the link for this video. But which brand you choose is actually irrelevant or less relevant, as long as you follow this kind of thought process. I always carry three camera bodies with me. I have a primary camera body, a secondary camera body, and what I call an incognito camera body. Okay, your primary camera body, uh, in my case, the X-T4, is what you're going to be using most of the time. It's your workhorse. You know this camera like the back of your hand. It's never let you down. You can operate it in the dark with your eyes closed, one hand tied behind your back kind of thing. That's what you're gonna be using most of the time on an important trip like this where you don't want to miss any images. Now, God forbid something were to happen to that camera, especially if you're on an assignment, personal trips too, but assignments even more important is you do want a secondary camera body in case something happens to this. Um, and in this case, it's the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II, which um, little brother of the X-T4, it's not weather sealed, but it still has the same, mostly the same control layout and functionality as my primary camera body. So I can go back and forth between one camera and the other without having to think like, oh, which camera am I using? How do I just focus on it or whatever? Because they're both the same, even though they're not the exact same camera. So that's important. And even if you know, I'm not just strictly using this as a backup, it's nice to have as a secondary body. So I can always have you know, maybe a prime lens on this camera and a zoom lens on this camera. So I have those kinds of options without having to change out lenses. And in this upcoming trip, I'll be spending a lot of time in the pool uh, and at the beach in the water. So this one's actually going to live in an underwater housing that I am bringing in Outex underwater housing with a dome port, uh, where this will mostly be in that housing most of the time, so I don't have to 
go back and forth between putting my primary camera body in and out of that housing. I'll just keep this one in there most of the time throughout the day when I'm gonna be around the water and then I'm free to shoot with this one without the camera housing. So it's nice to have those kinds of options. Now I mentioned the incognito camera. This is gonna be your camera, you know, when you're not taking your whole kit, when you go out uh, for dinner at night or you have a personal day, you're just taking some time off wandering around town. It's nice to have something that's a little more capable than a phone. And for me, it's the uh, Fujifilm X100V, which is a uh, fixed lens, 35 millimeter, uh, but it almost fits in my pocket. I can just throw it over my shoulder anytime I step out of the accommodations and always have this camera with me. And the other really nice thing about this, I don't just have it when I'm out and about, like for dinner and on personal days, but when you're in areas where people are maybe a little camera shy, people confuse this camera all the time for an old film camera or just a cheap digital camera. Like it doesn't look like a high end digital camera like it is. If you approach people on the street, they're going to be a little less cooperative if you wanna take a picture of a stranger with a camera like this. Big camera, big lens. Uh, when you're in areas where people don't see a lot of photographers, they're gonna be a little shy around that. However, a camera like this gives you a lot uh, you know, lower profile, better access for that. Um, and so that's why I love having a camera that's completely different from the other SLR style bodies. Uh, that's smaller, take with you anywhere, and doesn't scream, you know, professional photographer. So that's nice to have. So that's my kind of philosophy of why I take the cameras that I do, and you can incorporate that into whatever brand of camera you're using. Now let's talk about lenses. A lot of people like to poo-poo on zoom lenses, but there's something to be said for a quality zoom lens, especially when you're doing this kind of storytelling work where you need to get like the wide angle photos, the close up photos, the portraits, all these kinds of things. It is really nice to have the versatility of a zoom lens. Now for personal projects and you want to challenge yourself by using just a prime lens, that's one thing. but when you have this kind of, uh, I don't wanna say pressure, but when someone has given you an assignment to capture these images, it is nice to have uh, a good zoom. So this is a 16 to 55 f2.8 that is on this camera 95% of the time. I almost always keep this lens on this camera. I love it. And after years and years of uh, photography experience and a collection of photos going through your metadata, for all of your photos can help you determine uh, which focal lengths you primarily use. And for me, it's this focal length range right here. Um, and so that's usually always on my camera. If I do need a little extra reach, depending on the trip, um, I will have a zoom lens with me also a telephoto zoom. Uh, you know, I'll be on the beach photographing surfing lessons and things like that. So uh, a good zoom of 50 to 140 APS-C will be great for that. And if I need a little extra reach, a small 1.4 teleconverter uh, to give me some extra range with this lens. So I'm not having to carry like a giant 400 millimeter telephoto lens. Now I do also have some primes, but I'm not taking primes just because I love prime lenses. I'm taking primes because they have a purpose. Okay, so the first one is a, a Rokinon 12 millimeter uh, F2 wide angle lens important for me to think about taking on a trip like this because I know I'm going to be in tight quarters. I'm going to be indoors um, and I'm going to want uh, that extra wide reach if I need it. So I'll have my 16 to 55 zoom on my X-T4 and when I go into that situation, I'll just put this lens on my secondary camera body so that when I do need that wide view, I can just put this camera down and pick this camera up and get that wide view. And then the other lens, prime lens that I'm taking is the uh, 16 millimeter f1.4, which creates absolutely stunning environmental portraits. I know I'm going to be doing a lot of environmental portraits on this trip, so that's a great focal length for that. And the characteristics of this lens are absolutely remarkable. So 
Again, when I know I'm going to be doing environmental portraits, I'm gonna have that opportunity. I will put this lens on this camera. And when that situation arises, go to this camera. But having a zoom, you know, if you are in tight quarters and all you brought was a 35 millimeter prime lens because you love your 35 millimeter prime lens, what happens if two people are on opposite sides of the room and you can't back up anymore? You're not going to tell them, like, stop what you're doing and stand closer so I can fit you in my frame. This is documentary photography, and you don't really do that. You take pictures of the events that are unfolding. And so being able to zoom out with a zoom lens gives you that kind of capability. I do have a collection of other prime lenses also that I could take, but I don't see any time or you know, the style of photography that I'll be doing isn't really conducive to those lenses. There's nothing I hate more than taking equipment that when, you know, when I get home, realize I never used. So this all comes with experience, but really think about, I love this lens, but am I going to use it on this trip? And if the answer is like maybe to no, but even if it's maybe, you probably don't want to take it. Save that room for something else, uh, save the weight, uh, and take it on the next trip. So now let's talk about lighting. On this trip, I am going to be on the go a lot. I'm going to be talking to a lot of strangers, interviewing a lot of people uh, in their homes, in their market stalls, and wherever else. I'm not going to be able to set up these elaborate lighting setups with light stands and soft boxes and remote cable triggers and, and all these kinds of things. So again, think about what you're actually going to use and why and bring what's going to fit those requirements. So for me, in this case, you know, I'm mostly going to be taking advantage of natural light. However, there will uh, admittedly be some times where natural light will not be enough. And in that case, I'm just going to bring a little speed light with me. So this is my little travel speed light. It's a think tank photo a cable management pouch, uh, but inside just a very basic speed light that I can keep on my camera and then just point it uh, at a white wall or a white ceiling to get a little bounce light off of that wall or a ceiling if I'm indoors or outdoors, just as a little extra fill uh, when I need it. And then to balance the light, if I'm in any kind of mixed lighting situations, um, I have a little band on here to hold some color correction gels that are in a little wallet in here just for more natural looking results. And then if I ever did you know, need to get that flash off the camera, um, then just a little small portable radio trigger for that. But everything fits in this little tiny bag. And on days where I know I'm not going to need uh, any kind of artificial light, just leave this in my room. So again, you just ask yourself, like, what's the minimum equipment that I anticipate needing? And can I get away with anything less? Maybe a speed light is too much. Maybe you don't even need any artificial light where you're going. So maybe in that case, all you may want to bring is a portable reflector. I just realized I left my uh, Rogue reflector at home, like a 32 inch collapsible reflector, one with a silver side, one with a white side. Um, and this can even fold up and fit into my Think tank uh, shoulder bag, and I can just quickly pop it open to get a little reflected light to illuminate my subject a little better. And that takes a matter of you know two seconds. These people who have given me their time are not waiting around while I'm trying to set up um, all these other lights and soft boxes and whatnot. Um, and so getting away with this, knowing how to use these, uh, is pretty critical and all you need. And now for the miscellaneous uh, kind of gear, I always travel with an Instax portable printer um, and some film cartridges, usually about 30 film cartridges. Uh, but this little printer is amazing. It's a great icebreaker, meeting strangers at you know, markets and taking their photo, talking to them, and then presenting them with an image that you just took. Uh, it's wonderful, marvelous, love it. A uh, lens cleaning kit, a little bag with some uh, uh, dust blower, a brush, uh, some fiber cloths, cleaning cloths, pre-moistened cleaning cloths, um, and lens cleaning solution all in this little bag. Helps keep me organized. Notepad and pen, uh, right in the rain, indestructible 
uh, notepad for taking notes throughout the day. And then when I get back to my room at night, I'll expand on those notes while the information is still fresh. But it's nice to be able to write that down in any kind of weather conditions so that you remember what you're taking pictures of and all those important details. Backup kit. You should always be backing up your photos at least once a day using the 3-2-1 system that's outlined in the article I'll link uh, in this video. I am currently uh, and have been using the Narbox 2.0, which the company just kind of disappeared. But this device still works uh, as a backup tool um, and I can edit with it also. I'm in the market for a new one because Obviously, this won't be supported forever since the company no longer exists. So um, anyways, I'm going to take this um, and back it up every single day. And that stays in this little pouch. Again, kind of keeping everything separate and organized so that I can just pull out what I need for that day. Portable battery pack. Yeah, I can charge cameras, phones, iPads, my printer, you know, connect my printer to this and charge the printer up with a portable battery pack is always something that I always have with me. Little headlamp with a red lens, just in case. Never know when you want to keep your night vision. A bag with miscellaneous cables and batteries and chargers and things like that. Memory card wallet. You can never have too many memory cards. And those, uh, again, are always one of my backups, my photo backups. I never overwrite images while I'm on the road. Um, I fill them up like rolls of film and then just stow them until I get home. And then in the uh, back sleeve here, have a laptop. I usually travel with just an iPad. However, on a trip like this, where I know I'm gonna be taking uh, thousands of photos, it's just a lot easier editing wise to do all of that on a laptop using Photo Mechanic and then processing in Capture One versus trying to do all of that on a tablet with Lightroom. I've, I've just found you know, Photo Mechanic on a laptop is uh, gonna be a lot more efficient and I'm gonna have a really short turnaround time for post-production on this project. So I'm gonna wanna get ahead of everything um, as soon as I can and doing that on the road with a laptop is really gonna help me do that. And then finally, this isn't going to travel in the plane with me in my bag, but you know, I'm not gonna be doing really gnarly long exposure night photography or anything like that, but it's always nice just to have a tripod with you this is the uh, Mi Photo Backpacker tripod. Really small, really light. If I need extra stability, I can just uh, attach my bag to the center column for extra added stability. But this takes up no room at all in my duffel bag with all of my clothes. Um, and that's also where I will have my underwater housing. But that's it, I'm taking, this bag is my carry-on with all my photo gear. This uh, as my personal item with my other smaller camera in it. These two never get checked. My checked luggage is a small duffel bag with all my clothes, but that's it. I mean, traveling alone, I, I'm not gonna be able to take a lot of stuff, but everything that I am taking has a purpose. I know for sure that I am going to use everything that I am going to take and improvising where I need to. Um, and that's part of you know doing this as uh, cheaply, as lightly, and as swiftly as possible. So that's a giant mess of equipment on my desk here. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave them down below. You can follow me on Instagram for updates on the trip as I will be leaving for Peru in about one week. Can't wait. First international trip in two years. Oh my God, I've missed it. All right, looking forward to it. Uh, see you soon.